New York, it's going to hell under Democrats. Police need your help. New video this morning shows a wild shootout. Robberies, up. Four suspects, 20 robberies. Major felonies, way up. Home invasions, gang retaliation, killings, and innocent lives caught in the crossfire. And last year, an unprecedented rise in violence against police. Horrific attack. They brutally attacked a New York City police officer. Want to know why our cops are getting assaulted? There's no consequences. Nine shootings, 11 victims, two dead. But what are corrupt New York Democrats focused on? Trump. We are filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump. Earlier this afternoon, Donald Trump was arraigned on 34 felony counts. Political persecution at the highest level. A Democrat prosecutor elected on a get Trump platform. They've quite frankly given up on trying to beat him at the polls. Either going to steal it or stop it by lawfare. They are relying on lawfare to try to win this election. New York has become a legal banana republic. They are so determined to get Donald Trump. The legal system is being weaponized against someone who clearly is a political enemy. This isn't prosecution. It's persecution. This is election interference. Welcome back to the show. It is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. My name is Wayne Dupree, host of the Wayne Dupree podcast, and we are live. Let me introduce, coming from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Godfather of Conservative Radio, Ms. Hutchfield Jr. Hi, Wayne, Jason, and everybody out there. Glad to be here. And then we have the Imam of Minnesota, Mr. Jason Roberts. Hey, 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 happy Wednesday, everybody. I don't know about you, but this Trump trial just keeps getting better. You sound drunk. <laughs> well, it's noon somewhere. You sound drunk. The only thing missing was... <laughs> All right, here we go. Um... Glad, glad, glad to be here in the land of living. Today is the off day for the Trump trial. Nobody's there, so uh, uh, the judge is, uh, I guess, working on other cases too. But um, today is off day. We saw President Trump in um, at a bodega uh, yesterday uh, in New York after the after uh, what I think they got seven or eight jurors now. Um, but they've gotten rid of 50, I think. <laughs> and so um, that can't be partial or whatnot. But President Trump did get in front. Um, President Trump did say a couple of things uh, yesterday in front of the bodega. I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up doing so well. We're way ahead in the polls of getting against Biden. Biden has destroyed our country. Look. Biden is the worst president in the history of our country. Worse than Jimmy Carter by a long shot. Jimmy Carter's happy because he's got he's had a brilliant presidency compared to Biden. He's destroyed our country between the borders and everything else. He has destroyed our country. Not only that, wars are breaking out all over the world. We'll end up with this foolish person, this person that doesn't act. We're going to end up in a world war three. So we have to get rid of Biden. That was um, President Trump. Yeah, um, go ahead. Stress, stress levels were up pretty high in the security detail there. <laughs> Watching those guys, they're like, <laughs> I was going to say, let's we were get talking, out of here. We were talking about Trump going into some inner cities. Here, dudes in 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 the hood in New York at a bodega that got robbed. <laughs> you know what? That's what I was gonna. I was gonna let y'all kind of analyze that for a little bit before before I even talked about that. But it seemed like that's I mean <laughs> all I saw when I when I saw the video, I'm like, okay. He's doing a Detroit in New York. Okay. Okay. He look good. Okay, man. Uh, 
And then all the headlines were, yeah, he stopped at a place where somebody, I mean, where somebody was killed. I was like, what? Yeah, Bragg prosecuted the guy, the owner of the shop, for defending right? himself. Jeez. Okay, well, there you go. Um, I, I just hope one thing. I hope, this is to all you people in New York City, you Trump supporters, go stealthy and go in there and get on that damn jury. Yep. Yeah, I mean, oh. even the ones they put on, there was a couple that had done social media posts going, oh, great, Joe Biden won. And people that went to, like, Joe Biden victory celebrations. and One and lady Trump, with a lock them up tweet. Yeah, and Trump's only got, like, I think 10 hard kicks that he can do for people in the jury. And they already used five. So, I mean, how bad are the ones that he's kicking? You know, I'll tell you what. I read something this morning. And this lawfare and, and this this persecution mm -hmm. and the divide and conquer tactics that are going on all over the Western world, not just the United States, but in Hungary and over in the EU, it's going to fall apart on them. People are going to, there comes a time when people forget about the rule of law. The rule of law only applies when you trust the people applying it. And pretty soon, you know, you've got a situation now where all their divide and conquer tactics from the Uniparty, not just the Democrats, their divide and conquer tactics are joining us together. If that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're not even hiding it. The Hill's headline this morning, Democrats are hopeful that President Biden's freedom to hit the campaign trail while former President Trump is stuck in a New York courtroom for weeks, maybe months. Gives his re-election campaign a jolt. I mean, we were saying that 90 days ago or a year ago, and it was all oh, your conspiracy theorists. There's no plot. And here's the here's the, one of the things that happens. My son-in-law is a union carpenter, and he was working at the U.S. Steel Building yesterday. And he said we had to hurry up and get ready because Biden's going to be here. I said that's why Trump is in court because so he can't be here. Right. He should be here. He would get. 50,000 times more people than, than Biden. Yeah, that's why. I mean, I knew, I I sort of kind of figured that out when the judge said, you're going to be here, uh, you aren't going to miss a day. And what's that? Um, most people were saying the trial was going to be like five, four or five weeks. So it's like, can you imagine in 2016, he was going from state to I, he was doing like two and three states a day. Yeah. So if so, if you take if you remove him from uh, the camp, well, hold on. If you remove him from the campaign trail, like y'all were saying, most people would think, OK, well, out of sight, out of mind. But what he's doing right now is that he's using the cameras when he comes out of the watch guard because the media is saying, okay, we got to cover the trial. Guess what? You also have to cover him coming out and saying something. Plan about B. It. And yep. uh, um, the bodega um, thing uh, was almost like a rally um, to a point. Uh, but I was also thinking about uh, uh, because uh, Benny Johnson was like, yeah, uh, uh, Donald Trump went to Harlem um, uh, uh, and uh, black Americans support Donald Trump. It's like, dude, you haven't been to Harlem lately. They First kicked of all, that Spanish Harlem. Yeah, they kicked a lot of the black people out of Harlem. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk 1920, 1930, yeah. But he's going there now. I wish Kat was still around. That was her neighborhood before she moved yeah. to Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. But then that also... Because, you know, I go back and forth. Well, no, actually, I don't go back and forth. I try to educate people on this on the city um, thing because a lot of people believe that black people live in the city and black people have destroyed the city. For me, I look like Baltimore. They moved a lot of black people out of the city. Every city. Right. They moved them out. And they... Well, under the promise, <laughs> we're going to fix your rat infested uh, um, houses and stuff. And we're going to move you to a portion of the city over here. Y'all stay over there, though. 
but we're going to move you over here. And Don't what did they your, do? Your house turned into a Gucci store. There you go. A, a good, um, what's that? Uh, what's the word that they use for that? Gentrification. Gentrification. There you go. There you go. Um, and oh, even here in Baltimore, they move uh, many black families out and fixed up the homes and sold them at such a high rate that well, you, you have um, uh, uh, young young college kids or something or or whatnot moving into these places. I mean, you remember on the wire. You remember toward the end of the wire, Stringer Bell developed that property. A drug dealer developed a property to throw blacks out and bring right. bring rich people in. Exactly, a exactly, and and that's what when I when we hear about the city this and city that, and I'm like, I don't think a lot, um, and maybe this comes from a lot of people haven't been in the city to know this, you know, and and they definitely don't go in the hood. You know that's where the hood come. That's where the hood comes from. There's a hood that really nobody goes at. But I remember, I remember when I was uh, when I went to England um, in the early 2000s, and um, it was a crazy thing because I'd never seen anything like it before in the United States until when I came back. But during the day, the city was booming big time. We see people on the street. The streets were, I mean, cars and everything. But at night, it looked like a ghost town in the city. Now, when you crossed over a certain street and whatnot, that's where all your partying and stuff was going on. Uh, you know, and 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 um, the place was lit up like Christmas. Yep. I I saw that. I mean, and lots that's of cops. On, exactly right. So when I saw that in England, I was like, wow. This is crazy what I'm seeing over here. I didn't see that until a few years later when they start doing it over here. They start doing it over here. Even um, Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh, if you go downtown at night, it's you really don't see a whole lot of people walking on the street. But it, you, go, what, you, go, you go a neighborhood over in the south side, it's booming like you were talking about. Exactly. The partying and stuff like that. And all everybody is from, going. All the overflow from all the professional sports games and everything. Exactly. Exactly. They don't go downtown, man. You get no, downtown. Things. Exactly right. They, they you better downtown. be packing if you're going downtown, and they'll so, probably arrest you if you are. Right. But when I saw Donald Trump, now I also have to say, two days ago on the first day of the trial, there wasn't a lot of people outside. George Cut. Whether they cordoned them off or whatever, there wasn't a whole lot of people, and some people were making jokes about it. Yesterday, different story. The word got out. Yeah, word, yeah exactly. It's, oh no, no, no! You can't be making jokes about President Trump and the support and stuff. And the people showed up. I, oh, oh, but um, you were talking about the jurors, right? Yeah. This crazy woman. Can you share your opinion of of, of the former president and, and, and why you felt <laughs> that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, I, during uh, COVID-19, I lived with someone who was immunocompromised and I think his handling of COVID-19 was uh, abysmal. <laughs> um, I also, I have a sister who is adopted from China and um, the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious and therefore made me angry. Um, there are policies he has supported um, that regard uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Um, and I think all Shout out. Listen. I know. Thank you. L listen. She was going to be. She doesn't seated. know. She doesn't know. She, do she doesn't know why she doesn't like Donald Trump. She's an that offended, angry white woman. And they're going to be the end of us. Right. But she, I, but uh, she, she, she really has no reason. She's going along with what she was told or bits and pieces. That's why she couldn't form a sentence. 
And notice she it was all know. feelings, too. It was all right. feelings. Right, right, right. You know, she's talking about, well, you know, how, um, how he feels on reproductive right? What? He's, he's pro-life. He's right. pro-life. I mean, and wants, he, and wants nothing to do with legislating it. Right. I mean, right. and 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 then if you really want to um, get mad with him for being pro-life, he gave a story about what made him pro-life. So how can you be mad and him making a choice? You want women to have a choice. Why can't he have a choice? Yeah. Remember when they used to call it pro-choice? Exactly. Right. What, why can't he have a choice? You know? But I mean, you know? that woman was going to be seated. And she told the judge she could be impartial, but then when they were interviewing her, it came out that she had some work schedule stuff that could make it difficult. And that's the only reason she wasn't seated. So meanwhile, there's been two or three people that are pro-Trump that are like, I'm a pretty big fan of President Trump. And they're like, yeah, you probably you shouldn't serve on the jury. Yeah. And but that, but the lefties are like, oh yeah, no, I'll be impartial. I'll, I'll keep an open mind even though I hate Trump and I celebrate Biden's victory and I think Trump's awful and whatnot. So you guys in line at the bodega getting all this, right. And, 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 and what some people are missing. Some people don't even care about the trial. They just want to be famous. Right. They just, they want to be what this woman just did. They, they want to be on camera, uh, uh, on CNN, uh, on, uh, all the networks giving up. Well, yeah, yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. I don't, I can't say why. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's just car you drive, you know? I mean, for real, think about it. Well, can uh, you imagine too, if you're, let's say there's two or three Trump supporters on that jury and you got the other jurors looking at you saying, yeah, no, we're going to convict him. And, you're every day you're walking in and out of that courtroom with those anti-Trump protesters and they know who you are. We saw that with Derek Chauvin in Minnesota. There was a 0% chance any juror could go through that crowd and could say, yeah, no, I'm not going to vote to convict him. They would have been, they would have been destroyed in Minneapolis. And the same is going to be true for a pro Trump person on this jury. So I, I hope whoever, I hope there's a courageous person that can stand up. I I hope that they are courageous enough to say that they ain't Trump supporters. That's all I'm saying. Yep. You get up there, Donald Trump. I can be impartial. How do you feel about Donald Trump? I don't have I don't have no feelings about it. Now, one thing that I've been watching lately is reality shows. People being in the house for over 70, 80 days or whatnot. And there's one constant that goes along with these reality shows. People can't stop talking. Okay. Uh, sooner or later, the real person comes out. So in the case of if you are a Trump supporter and you do get on Trump, that jury, you've got to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> That's where I'm going with this. I mean, it's a damn shame that we have to do this. I mean, <laughs> right? Can't we just have a regular court, you know, and have a judge yeah. that judges it? You know, now these people want to see what it looks like when the Constitution's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? what you, part? um, you, y'all were talking about, well, I, I talked about this, you know, that juror. Yeah, she wants to be on CNN. I just happened to see this. So in the jury questionnaire, uh, that you answer the questions to out loud. Sorry, this is filling up. Um, uh, there's one question at the end that says, uh, is there anything else that might affect uh, your ability to serve that you haven't mentioned other than all of the questions that they asked? Um, and I said, the nature of my job would make it very difficult for me to be here from nine to five for at least six weeks and probably longer. Um, it's not really something that I can entirely do, you know, by myself in the hours from five to whenever uh, after being. It was that the reason you thought that they dismissed you? Was it clear to you why? So. I believe so. It was. It was right after that question that. The Think of that. She was going to be seated. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, but I do know this. She, she, she. This is your educated. Yeah. <laughs> This is your educated. I'm still trying to get over her answer. She said that 
she thought that Trump's handling of COVID was abysmal. Right and here, she she stood right up there and said, "I'm living with a guy with AIDS." Yeah, <laughs> because she said he's with immune immunodeficiency or something like that. And I'm thinking, what did he do? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he he rushed everything to the forefront. I think so, it was a mistake. So did you could be safe. Yeah, that's what he says. Okay, but thinking like a liberal, you know, he did it so we could be safe. I can't believe what he said about the Chinese. I have a half Chinese adopted kid or so. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, and if you think about it too, these folks in October, yeah. these folks in October were screaming, I'm never going to take that Trump shot. And by January, they're like, we need to require every single person in the world to get a shot. <laughs> and, and it's like in 90 days, you go from, I'm never going to touch it to, we need to require everybody to do it. And, and the light bulb never, like, I wasn't going to do it either way. Even if Trump said one and said, hey, either. here's the thing. I'm like, I, I mean, either. Nope, nope, you know? nope. I don't nope. believe nothing about that pandemic. I got yeah. on here. Um, well, okay, whatever. I ain't even going to go into it. All I know is that I, I know how I felt and I made my decision. And that, and, and if, uh, and if y'all want to know, um, uh, we'll have a, we'll have a show to talk about it. So, uh, <laughs> right. it'll be on rumble only. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be on rumble. We can do that on rumble. Right. Yeah, man. But I'm just saying these people don't even like make any sense. They'll, no. they'll go from one ditch to the other with nothing <laughs> changing. What'd you, say? What'd you say? I said, they go from one ditch to the other. Oh, ditch. Okay. Ditch. Uh, yeah. Okay. I didn't say the B word. No, you know, keep coming out. What the heck? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, the um the uh, the court is out of session today, but it should be uh, around um tomorrow. Um it should be back on um thing tomorrow. Um real quick, I was out yesterday. I want to thank Hutch and I want to thank the Godfather and the Imam. Or, uh, <laughs> that's a new title. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get I'd a turban. I don't be Jen. Do you know how to tie a turban? Like, let's go <laughs> for um, standing in yesterday. D- did a did a real uh, good. They look good too. Yeah, they look good uh, up there. I was like, but damn man, they don't need me. I mean, it. Oh, that's true. Wrong answer. Yeah, we totally need you. That's a one, that's a once in a while thing. I mean, <laughs> but no, they no I'll they tell you what, my internet went down before it too. I only I only yeah, got fired like 15 minutes before the show. Yeah. Look, yeah, I was like, oh geez, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I don't I don't to find some videos. It was fun. I don't have my glasses here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll bring them down tomorrow, but um, I wasn't in a laughing mood yesterday when I walked into the nursing home. So, you know, I walked in there, hat on, sunglasses. Uh, how you doing, sir? Didn't say nothing. Didn't say nothing to nobody. I'm just going back to my mom's room. Turned the corner and my sister looking up at me like, uh uh-uh. And my mom's brother was in there. My mom was asleep. My, my mom's youngest brother was in there. And um, I'm asking questions. But where uh, did you talk to the people on the night shift? No. They aren't here yet. Do you know the people on the night shift? No. The next thing I know, I, I have no more questions for my sister. I, I turned around and went to um, <laughs> I went to the nurse's station. And I... I looked at the little girl. I stood there. I am still stone faced. I, I I am not happy at all. Yeah, stone face, like um, I know y'all are morning shift. When does the afternoon shift come in? Um, uh, um, they. Well, we. I mean, it's it's. Uh, you know, she's fumbling over words now. I'm not racist, but I have to say it like this in this context. It was a little it was a young white female that I was asking a question to, but there was an older black woman that was sitting beside her. 
in the um, the the little uh, white um, nurse, I guess, was fumbling around trying to find what I needed while the older black woman was like. <laughs> She's like, like, I'm staying out of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, uh oh, uh oh, what? Uh oh, he, he he's here. So, um, to make a long story short, the get um, they put me in with the unit director, and when I came around the corner in the unit director, <coughs> then you I can see her eyes. I I can see her eyes, and I sat in there and talked to her for about forty minutes. It turns out this. I said, oh, I had to say this. The the unit director that is in there now has only been there for two weeks. They got rid of the old one. The social director that was there, they got rid of her and put in a new one. So when the new unit director saw what happened to my mom a couple of nights ago, she was not happy. But she also let me know that she's been there for two weeks. And she's already implemented a lot of new things that weren't being done in the first place. But there's still a whole lot more that needed to be done. Um, at, um, and and there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more to the story. But as we were leaving, my sister tried to clean everything up for me. Don't don't be scared of my brother. He's he's okay. He's he's great. I was like, don't tell him that. What's wrong with you? But but the unit director was like, oh no. Oh no! When he came in, we could see he w- he wanted to lean on somebody. You know, he, he he was serious. That's his mom. You know, that's your mom. So, uh, and my kids aren't happy about what is happening to um, their grandmother too. You're talking, you're talking about ten ten at least ten falls since December, and I even see it. I saw a little bruise on him. Well, it wasn't a little bruise. It was a big bruise on her hip. Uh, we didn't know that until yesterday. So, But that didn't look like it happened the night before. That, I mean, that could have been there for a while. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all, all the stuff from equipment and what you got. Uh, and thank you, um, Jay, for reading the, um, the thing about what had happened. But... Uh, for update, my sister sent me this morning. She said, um, I, I just talked to mom. That was at 1058 this morning. She was sitting in front of the nurse's station. She took her shoes off. The nurse is saying she's better to, today. They're keeping an eye on her like they should have been doing from the beginning. So, um, oh, oh, yeah. And then early this morning, she did say, have a wonderful day. Still cracking up at you yesterday. Your face is all I see. Have a wonderful day. Um, yeah. Sometimes I mean, sometimes you have to go in there stoic when you, you know, because uh, I, I mean, I went there to raise hell, and it must have been God to defuse the whole entire situation because the person that had been there for the for all for the majority of it. Uh, they they got rid of her. So f- for me to argue with somebody who's only been there for two weeks, I couldn't do it. In my heart, I couldn't do it. But I, I wanted them to know, not another fall. Okay? Yeah, you got to balance it. You got to balance yeah. it between getting something yeah. done and making sure that you know that you're going to leave in a minute. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I told her too. I'm going to be like, yeah, you... Uh, Miss Lena, you're gonna be hearing a whole lot from me more. Okay, uh, my sister lives there. I don't. I live uh, almost two hours away, so I'm not there all the time. But uh, you know, thank you. I mean, wow, y'all are y'all are great, man. Y'all are so great. I put that. I put that. Uh, I put that post out. And as of yesterday afternoon, because I haven't looked at it um, since then, as of yesterday afternoon, it was like 121,000 people had, had seen it, you know? 
And then when I gave the update yesterday before I even got home, it was like 45, 50,000 people has seen that. I was like, well, okay, well, thank you, Elon Musk, for giving me these two tweets. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, y'all were awesome. Y'all were awesome. And um, she had uh, she had blood on the brain, blood on the brain. And the doctor, you, you know, it was weird to me. And then and then we'll get back to news. Um, when my sister called me the other night while they were in the hospital, uh, the doctor came in and she put me on speakerphone. And the doctor was like, uh, Mr. Dupree? I said, yes. Are you driving? She's still alive, right? And then, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, yes. I, I just wanted to make sure that you weren't driving with the information that he was getting ready to tell me. And he gave me, I, he gave us some information. He, he, <laughs> he got to a point where I might be going over here. I said, bro, look, bro, of all the stuff that I watch online and stuff, I'm, you, you haven't lost me. Okay. And I ain't talking about TV shows. There's surgery and all that stuff and everything that on YouTube and you hear about the brain, you hear about all, all that stuff and everything. So believe me, you haven't lost me. I am with you 100%. Just let me know. And he did. And thank God for him. You know, he, uh, yeah. Thank God for him. And so many people, so many people are ha have gone through the same thing. So many people have gone through the same thing, it, especially with um, their parents falling. Your parents I, falling. Yeah. I was going to say, if you take Jason five or 10 years ago, I understood nursing homes and all that stuff. It It's bad. And then we lived through it with Jen's dad the past three, four years. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we literally had to, we had to move facilities a couple times till we got an okay one. And it wasn't the facilities. They just couldn't hire staff. Well, they so charge, was, they, they pay minimum wage. Well, actually, in Minnesota, they pay pretty good. They pay like 20-some bucks an hour. My a lot wife of was a CNA at one of those. Man, she didn't make anything. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, and it's and Minnesota's pretty good about that. But, I mean, it's ridiculously expensive. The care's not that good. The number of providers to patients. I mean, there were at the end, Ron, Jen's dad, was at an all-men's unit. And there was like 20 guys. And we'd go in the evening, and there'd be three dudes working, and one was handing out pills. So, you know, we, Jen and I would go literally every other day and then her sister would go every other day. So somebody was there every single day. And I don't know how we could have managed it without that, right. but it was funny. Cause like we almost became part of the staff. Like we'd show up, I'd see some old dude walking around that I know is not supposed to. And I'd be like, Hey, come on, you should get in your chair. And, <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, of all the problems in America, like what we do with old people to make sure they get appropriate care, yeah. Yeah. that should be something that, should it's unite reformed. us and and it i don't have the answer like it is there's a lot of problems with it but man it'd be nice if we get past like talking about killing babies and talk about like hey how do we make sure we give great care to old people and yeah. you know some of those greatest. people never get any visitors ever right you know what when i heard that i was shocked i mean you mean you mean these people are in here and their family is even i mean and i'm I'm not talking about their whole family is dead. I'm talking about their family is alive. They just don't visit them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Oh I know my, my God. ex went from, oh, this beauty. She worked there for like a month and a half. And at the beginning, she was like, oh, Mr. Smith is such a lovely man. And I gave him his medication. Two weeks later, she said, take your damn pills. Because it's too many people. It's too right. many. Like, like Jason said, she had way too many people on her list. There's like three of them. And there's 50 people in this place. Wow. Yeah, we'd show up. We'd always bring Ron coffee and a donut, and then we'd usually bring a treat for the staff. And we'd be like, "Hey, here's here's muffins or donuts for you guys too." And then there'd be like three or four dudes there because it was an all men's unit and it was memory care. And you know, you talk to the staff, you're like, "Oh, when did when did his you know family last come?" And and they're like great old dudes, you know. They just got like they're not all there. And like, oh well, they were there on Easter or something. I'm like, that was like a month ago and he's like yeah no they don't get many visitors and mm. you realize that you know the and i mean that's a family problem because yeah. you know those folks need to like at least your mom's got your sister nearby 
so she can go close. But like Jen's dad, the whole family's in Minnesota. He was in Florida, and we had to push to get him up to Minnesota. I couldn't imagine if he would have went into a facility in Florida without us to be there all the time. You know, the way that payment arrangements are made are criminal, too. I think that's one way to fix it. A lot of people, um, they have to give everything. Their entire estate, they have to give to the funeral or the nursing home, depending on which ones they are. They're not all like that. But I know when I was, when I retired, I went to a retirement seminar and the guy that was up there was, was uh, trying to educate us on long-term care. Right. And he said, all right, how many of you people have long-term care? Nobody raised their hands. He said, well, let me tell you something. At least one in six of you is going to be in long-term care. Right. And if you don't uh, take insurance out on it, they're going to take everything. And you don't want your family to have to take care of you in that situation That's right. because you want to make sure that they can maintain some, that you can maintain some dignity because long-term care involves a whole lot of intimate things you got to do. You know, well, yeah, you just Minnesota has some of the most progressive laws about this and how it worked in Minnesota, and I'll just do rough numbers, but like each month in memory care, it's like 10 grand just to talk around numbers, a little less than that at one of the facilities. And you had to get them in a care center and pay for it for like a year and a half, two years to establish care. And then at that point, if all his money was gone, then the state would take over paying for it. And it was funny because he had whatever, 150,000 from the sale of his house, it all went, like none of it went to the kids or the grandkids or the great grandkids. All of it went to the care facility. And then we were getting to the end and it's like, if he runs out of money before he's been there enough months, the family's going to have to pick up this 10 grand a month or whatnot. And this was a guy who had a pension and he worked for the railroad and, and, and all that stuff. And, and it, and it just, you know, the math worked out where we ran out of money right about the time he hit the number of months and then the state started picking it up. But, and like he needed a level of care where he couldn't have even been in the house. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, I don't have the answers, but those are the kind of things that Americans should be talking about. I want to get hit by a bus. Right. Boom. Right. Boom. Mortar round <laughs> right here. Mortar round right in the head. Right. You know, Hey, some people get hit by a bus and yeah, no, I don't want that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, back That's, to go ahead. I just, I just thought of something when I, about five years ago, before I got operated on and everything, when I was in really bad shape, mm. uh, overweight, couldn't breathe whole nine yards. Right. Uh, the, my doctor told me at the VA, can your, uh, can your wife lift you? I said, why would you ask me something like that? Because she's going to have to, if you keep doing this, you ain't going to be, you're going to take a stroke. Yeah, wow. Right. And I was like, that kind of shook me up a little bit. Wow. You know, um, what's happening with Iran? I, Iran is uh, threatening. Just, uh, you know, um, the EU or whatnot, or uh, um, the, the White House, they're talking about sanctioning Iran and stuff, and um, other countries are talking about sanctioning Iran. Haven't y'all realized sanctions? I mean, sanctions are nothing but a, 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 a tic tac to a whale these days. You're not you're not doing anything. Look look at Russia. Their economy is better than anything right now. And all, oh no, we're gonna sanction. No, we're gonna super sanction. We're gonna trip triple dog sanction you. I mean, what does Russia sell, man? Gas. Gas, That's it. baby. That's it. You know, but uh, all that, all that sanctioning stuff. <laughs> Jason, you, you used to work in a uh, uh, retail, and around Christmas time, uh, you know, y'all up the price on stuff, but then you told people there was going to be a sale, right? Um, right. Okay. So basically, the sanctions. They gave Iran all this money, and now all of a sudden they're going to sanction. You know, I, I mean. How do we know that the Iranians do not listen to President Biden's public warnings? Is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during 
the president's administration. What unfreezing are you talking about? The six billion dollars that the Qataris are holding that was unfrozen in order to get three hostages back, uh, John, that, you know, you said, well, there are strings attached to that. Is that money now going to be refrozen? I don't want to get any of any uh, policy decisions going forward here, uh, Martha. Uh, as I said last time you and I talked about this, that money can be refrozen at any time. Doesn't that seem and like a good time to do that? We won't hesitate to make that decision if we feel we need to, uh, but I'm not going to get ahead of a policy, policy decision that hasn't been made yet. <laughs> I'd love to see that guy locked up. <laughs> and how he can just stand there lying. Like, what are you talking about, the money we yeah, have right. That's a retired admiral. Right. Well, and I think, wasn't it like $16 billion or something they unfroze? They did it a couple times. $6 billion, I think. Yeah. And then... And, and the and Republicans they, voted for it, John Corker, or uh, Bobby Corker. Right. And they unfroze it, and they said, well, they can't use this money on military stuff. They have to use it on humanitarian stuff. And then anybody with the brain said, <laughs> but then all they do is take the money they were going to spend on humanitarian stuff out of the other budget and move it into there. Like, you're just giving them money. And and, and the smooth brains are like, well, no, no, no. This money can only go to that. It's like, do you not understand how life works? Like, And you got all these these Western politicians that know that the balloon's getting ready to go up, trying to tell every tell Israel not to not to retaliate. I'll tell you what to be prepared for. Be prepared for seven dollars a gallon gas. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. you need to be prepared for. Five or uh one fifth of all the oil in the world goes through the Strait of Hormuz. Yep. We've been down this road before if you were around in the 70s. Well, and if stuff keeps starting to ramp up over there, like buckle up, buttercup. Mm-hmm. And the strategic oil reserve, what's it down to like 14 days supply? Because Biden and, drained it last time. And this isn't just Israel and Iran either. You got to factor in Saudi. Yep. Saudi Arabia is not a fan of Iran's. This could this could explode real quick. You know, he said he said he wasn't making no, uh, uh, he wasn't filling it back up either because um, it was costing too much or something like that. But strategic. He tried to buy it for 78 and then it jumped to like 85 and they're like, oh, we can't afford it. We couldn't afford to fill it at 78 or whatever the number was. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but I think, I think Israel is still working out their deal about what they want to do. I, I I don't I don't really know what they're going to do. I just hold hold on to your hats and get ready. I'll tell you the thing that the thing that really bothers me and it really underlines the fact that there is a uniparty. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if we don't learn anything else this year, we better learn that. I mean, a lot of us, not just us. Right. People out there have to understand that this whole divide and conquer thing goes to Congress too. They are giving you the illusion. That somebody is fighting for you and nobody is. You've got Speaker Johnson coming out with a plan that gives Ukraine three times more money than Israel and zero for our border. Zero. Why would we do that? Why would we send money overseas and and while we're just allowing ourselves to be killed? I mean, I don't think that's set in yet. I don't think people realize. I, I mean, Jason showed a video yesterday on mm-hmm. your show, Wayne, that showed straight up thousands of Africans in New York City waiting for green cards. Yep. I mean, this is, you look at the violence that they commit against Christians in certain parts of Africa, and you got to pray that these aren't the same people. I got to say that's the best part of the the Trump hearing is you've attracted like 10 or 15 independent journalists that tend to be on the more conservative side and they're not afraid to walk around. And like Laura Loomer was down by the Capitol and then that brought a bunch of other people down there. And I mean, you look at those hundreds or thousands, whatever the number ended up being of military age men from Africa that are single and they're saying, they're, what are you a refugee from other than your country sucks? And your country sucks does not make you a refugee, you know? And it, how how are we just letting these people in, not vetting them? And part of their protest was because they were getting kicked out of a four-star hotel. 
It, it, it was funny because Jen doesn't watch the news during the day at work and she gets home and I showed her the video and she's like, well, how about y'all just go home? If you, you know, if you guys are mad that you're getting kicked out of our sorrow, just go home. It'll be okay. And everybody's acting like nothing's happening. Right. Like they're talking about this congressional aid. The speaker, here's the thing. The speaker of the house right now is the most important person in the country because Donald Trump is in court. He's the only guy that's out there supposedly sticking up for people, and he's not doing it. You know, I'm almost to the point where, you know what? If these fools lose the majority, all right, whatever. What's the difference? Yeah. You know what? Um, Donald Trump supports um, Speaker Johnson, by the way. Uh, um, Y'all were, I mean... because I was driving and stuff, uh, I didn't get to see the whole thing because it kept locking up. But y'all were talking about Speaker Johnson yesterday, and I think that that the the the, the bones of what you were talking about was they got something. They got some on him, or they showed him something that scared the they scared the Jesus out of him, and now all of a sudden they got him. Um, I think that's what happened. I really oh, do. Yeah. I mean, um, you were talking about the skiff. They put him in the skiff, and then the next thing you know, he's like, uh, "Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. We got to do something about this." I, to me, I wouldn't. Ho- I, to me, and I and and I know how we feel about Pfizer and stuff like that, but to me. If he is getting in there and he's seeing that, then you have to wonder about the intelligence community that we always talk about and what they're withholding from the from the American people. What groups are in the United States right now that's making if, if Speaker Johnson was black, now he's white. So for what did he see in that skiff? That scared the Jesus out of him to where he is now the political establishment. I'm not going to say he's a Democrat. I don't think he's a Democrat. He's just straight uniparty. Because when we say say that they are Democrat now, you talk, I mean, (laughs) Democrats don't even have morals. The, uh, 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 I think we start labeling them socialists or communists, you know, uh, because they really aren't democratic. If you really look at it, there's only one uh, Democrat in the Senate. His name's John Fetterman. Yeah. Fetterman <laughs> 2.0. He's way better than Fetterman 1.0. Yeah. Yeah. But that's but no, what I mean, used to talk. When you were talking about Johnson, I, I thought about that more I was, because I mean, honestly, I really believe the Jesus in this dude. I, I, I really do. I really do. And it's like, but I also believe he's surrounded by a whole lot of devils too. You the know, thing, and the thing that makes me nervous is not that they showed him something that scared him. It's that they made something up. I mean, you look at that intelligence community, they've got the entire best Hollywood uh, you need to make anything to show somebody. Just think of the, the, the best spy thriller that you ever watched in a movie. Imagine them doing that and making one just for Johnson. You know, I, I just, I don't trust them. I don't trust anything they do. Uh, you talked about that $6 billion that's sitting in Qatar. I know about that. You know what I mean? That's, right. that, a lot of that's government money. You know, I, I just don't, I, I think there's so much money at stake right now. But, that but I, I fear but, what they showed them. But remember what y'all were talking about when, um, when y'all were saying that um, terror cells, right, were in the United States, and y'all were just talking about that a couple of months ago, you know. And, and if you were Speaker Johnson and you heard that, wouldn't your efforts be to seal the border? See, I, I was going to say this is this is kind of the circle. Like to stop I think them from coming in, but yeah. if they're already in here, but no, if they're already in here, they're already in here. So. But they're not American citizens. Exactly. Right. But 
So this is the circle if you look at what Johnson said on its surface. I think it was some kind of threat or, hey, we got dirt on you, that kind of thing. And I could be wrong. But he went in there and he saw things domestically that terrified him so much yeah. that he was willing to let American people be spied on right. without a warrant. So what could those things be? Threats of biological attacks, mm-hmm. nuclear attacks. The Aryan Brotherhood. But Ar- the Aryan Aryan Brotherhood, the Black Panther movement. I mean, there's all kinds of, of things yeah. that are out there that they've manufactured over the years. But I mean, the intelligence community is not sharing those concerns with the American people right? so that That's we can demand saying. our members of Congress right. and the administration right. enact yeah. policies to reduce that. You right. know, they're, they're playing both sides of the coin. Like the I intelligence conquer. community, the intelligence community is fine. You let all these folks with bad intentions in because that just increases their budget. But and see, I felt that same way about um, Rand Paul. Rand Paul right. got up there and was talking about, and and and, and believe me, I, I believe, well, you know what? I ain't going to talk about Christian this and Christian that. Um, Rand Paul got up there, stood on the floor of the Senate, 24 hours, 32 hours, talking about NSA has got to stop spying on Americans, and it's, and 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 I, I'm going to be here until I turn um, blue in the face. We didn't know about that, but he came out and said something about that, and so I guess they passed a bill or something that would stop the NSA from doing it, but guess what? They still doing it. The NSA is still doing it. Of the building, you know, and the Republican Party warrant. support it supports it without right. warrant. And 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 guess who's being quiet about it? Guess who's not talking about it anymore? And Paul's not talking about it anymore. You really don't, I mean, you know, that that one and done thing was great. Everybody was tweeting about it, sharing it. Oh, look, he's still talking about it. And they say he's still doing it. As a matter of fact, the NSA not only uh <laughs> they expanded their operation. To um, work behind the scenes with Facebook and Twitter and Google. So, I mean, you know, that, and nobody's stopping that. You know, you know, I, I mean, I, I think, because, you know, Touch, you've been in skiffs too. There's a whole lot of stuff in there that nobody ever knows about that will, that, that will, <laughs> that will make Hutch black and me white. So, I mean, that's, but that's why they have skips. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, a few years ago, they were talking about some intelligence and stuff, and they would only and and they told Congress people that the only way they could see it is they had to go into the skip. So I mean, there's a there's a whole lot of stuff. I used to um, change out technical orders for the F one seventeen stealth fighter. And I had to go in. I mean, you know, you put your hand on the thing and skin and stuff, and then you go in there. Cell phone in the little cotton cubby <laughs> hole. <laughs> exactly right, you know. But when you get in there, I mean, seriously, you almost feel like the air felt different too. But you get in there, and you'd be like, okay, I just want to get in here, do my job, and get the hell out. Because I don't – you don't know what else is going – And but, um, you know, you sign your name. You do all that – all that stuff, and then you get out. The same thing with him. I I don't know if it was fake or what. Skiffs, skiffs really aren't... Well, eh, I can't say it without U.S. government. I was getting ready to say, skiffs aren't for fake stuff. But yeah, you can put fake stuff in skiffs. So to that point, you are correct. Um, they could have drummed up something. But nine times out of ten, they drum stuff up for us outside the skiff rather than inside the skiff. They make us see crazy stuff on TV. And, you know, we, man, I um, can't believe it. Be, uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, 325,000 jobs were created last month. And um, the economy's doing good. And then you drive along the street and people walking up and hey, I ain't got no money. They're stealing from people and stuff. Well, the economy's doing so great. Why is all this happening? You know? I don't know. I, I mean, I think 
And I and I think Donald Trump and Johnson talked about some stuff. And that's why Trump is like, just leave Johnson alone for right now. Okay. Because believe me, if Donald Trump don't like you, Donald Trump will bury you. <laughs> All right, for real? Okay. All right. So he don't put his support behind it. I ain't seen Rosie O'Donnell for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you got to feel for Trump because it's like <laughs> if you become the coach of a crappy team, like you might not like him, but this is your team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like when we sent him into the house, you know, when we sent him into the presidency, it's like, here's, you know, you know, here's Mitch McConnell and yeah. here's yeah. Know, what, whatever. Did you guys see is. that? Did you guys see that meme yesterday with, uh, the, the, the text was, come to think of it, I've never seen these two in the same room together. And it showed Rachel Levine and Mitch McConnell. Yes! They're freaking spitting images of each other. <laughs> Mitch is going to throw on the wig. And... Oh, man, it's probably the same guy. But, yeah. I mean, imagine you're President Trump. You get elected. You discover all this awful stuff. And then it's like you look at the people that are supposed to have your back and you're like, oh, man, I am so screwed. Like, I, I wonder what I'd love to ask him that. Like, what what was the day? When did you go? Uh Oh, I think it was that Saturday morning. Right. That Saturday morning when he was like, I told you they were spying on me. They were <laughs> spying on me. I was like, man, he was up early, you know. We but I wonder, if he, for a while. I wonder if he realized how many Republicans were against him. Oh, and yeah. The, and the generals, the freaking yeah. generals. Yeah. Now, yeah, he's got to be sitting time, there going, these generals are lying to me. Yeah. How, how's that even a thing? Like, like of all the people you should figure you can trust, the military should be the one. I'll tell you what, man. I had a I had to brief a one star general all the time in Iraq. Mm -hmm. about equipment maintenance things. And I had a lieutenant colonel that I worked for, right? And it was my responsibility to get my report for the battlefield update assessment, which was like a skiff, but it was giant. It had big screen TVs and everything. Everybody had a microphone. And I had this report that I gave them. And I said, we got so many percentages of the armored personnel carriers down or armored security vehicle, whatever. And it was a readiness report. And the colonel asked me one time, hey, can't you uh, bring those numbers up and then we'll put them on there this afternoon? I was like, look, I'm not lying to this guy. If you want to lie to this guy, you're my boss. You go lie to him. He deserves to know what he's got ready and what he doesn't have ready. And that was the end of that. He never, I briefed him every time after that. But I wasn't going to lie to the guy. But there are people in the military that that's how they progress is right, by right. lying to the general right. making him telling him what they think he wants to hear yep yeah if you're not ticking them off you're not doing your job what's the uh what's the term for those uh what's the term for those that tell brown, you what you brown noses yeah 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 there you go yep yep what's well, this? And that's what's tough i mean that exists in every job in america but that shouldn't exist in the military. Right. And, and some, people, some people, it doesn't, it didn't to me. Right. 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 It, right. It, it didn't. It's, 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 it's like, uh, it's like a virus. It's, it's, it's softly rolled in there, you know, I mean, just like a whole lot of other stuff. Um, what's this thing about president Trump falling asleep in um, court? Can you imagine? You ever been in court? That's some boring stuff. It is boring. <laughs> he's he's freaking. He's old, man. You better be glad. You better be glad I ain't doing it because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely make it through a church service that's an hour long, much less. Come on, man. Really? Oh, dude, you get me in a nice, Wait. warm spot, <laughs> sitting Wait. there inactive, like I totally, totally fall asleep. Black but yeah, church President like Trump. Three hours, man. I mean, come on now. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just saying it's one of my many shortcomings. But if I'm President Trump sitting there for six, seven hours, like, dude, there is a zero percent chance I stay awake. And frankly, I think most people, when they say how oh, Trump fell asleep in court, 
I think most people are like, ah, good for him. Like it's a waste <laughs> of his time, anyways. Yeah. Get rested yeah. up and then tweet at me at midnight, you know. Or- <laughs> Alina, I just have a second, but you know, there's two reports both days of him falling asleep in, in court. Any reaction to that? Is he tired? Has he just been running around a lot or a- any thoughts on that? If anything, he's probably brutally bored. I mean, he, it's 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 painful. They make him sit there through jury selection. The first day was procedural. Uh, but no, you know, I've heard that report. It's unlikely. I know him. I sat through trial after trial with him. That never happens. Wow. So that you uh, President Trump is is incredibly focused. <laughs> All right. Alina, thank you, as always. Great to have you here. Alina Haba. Alina. She tripped. She, she said, you know what? A lot of. A lot of these uh, these uh, these anchors do that. That's your question as you're talking. They talk underneath. It. Yeah, um, as you know, they got to get that little dig in there. Wayne does hey. that every now and then. Huh? Wayne <laughs> does that every now and then. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear that D. Okay. <laughs> wow, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> it's on video, Wade. It's on video. Uh yeah, I mean d- uh, when I heard that, I was like, dude, he, I mean, yeah, he's he, the dude is fl- the dude has <laughs> over a million sky miles. <laughs> Think, think you of know. it this way. Think of it this way. It's all they've got. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I got to say, part of what makes Trump good is I'm convinced the dude has ADD. And he's involved in all this stuff. And if you can imagine how busy his day is, how many different things from the businesses or the people or the family commitments or all this and that and all the things he's involved in. And you want that guy to sit there for hours on end while some, while that that numbskull lady we played earlier is up there trying to lie and say I'll be impartial, I mean, like yeah, dude, I hope he brings one of them neck pillows like you wear on the plane. <laughs> and oh, kind, Lord, of, kind of narrows down and just like well, you said I had to be night. here. You, you said I had to be here every right. day. You didn't say I couldn't fall asleep in here. So right, yeah. I'm here, Judge. I'm gonna be up late. I'm gonna be uh, over in Brooklyn. I remember, um, I remember having to sit in jury duty in downtown Baltimore, and um, they they had this. Uh, we were waiting to be called, and uh, we were sitting back in the back, and there was a big gigantic black dude on the back wall. There was nobody sitting with him. There was like, all these chairs. He took a lot. He took up about three or four chairs, you know. He, you know, kind of like that. So, I guess they got their jury, and the woman came in. She was like, uh, "We we have our jury, um, but uh, y'all stay here until a certain amount of time. Uh, yeah, uh, there's food here, and um, we, we got a movie called Music of the Heart." That uh, we're gonna be playing for y'all and yada yada yada. This brother was like, he said, "Well, oh man, oh, I'm I'm sorry." He, he said, uh, at, "After he woke up, he's like, well, there you go, I'm out again." And he just he just he just went back to sleep. So that was just a crazy story for a jury story, whatever. That could be um, Trump. He could sell those little neck pillows with Trump branding on it. If if you're having a hard time getting some sleep when you're sitting bringing there. in some Trump water bottles and putting them on a thing, yeah, right, yeah, Trump nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some Trump wine. There you go, baby. Um, President Biden is uh, Trump is trying to be tough. Uh, no, not true. Biden is trying to be... China is not our enemy. I believe then, and I'm even more convinced now, that a rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. We want to see China rise. A rising China can be a significant asset for the region and the world. China is going to eat our lunch 
Come on, man. They're not bad folks, folks. But guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, not they're competition for us. China is not our problem. We can help them with some of their problems. China is not a problem. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. And so, what are we what are we worried about? We talk about China as our competitor. We should be helping. Do you think, in retrospect, that you were naive about China? No. They've been paying him for decades. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, wow. 2013 is when, um, no, wait, or was it earlier than that? When, uh, when they, uh, helped China, when Congress helped China, Republicans. Well, several times. That was during the Clinton era. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Wouldn't you? Yeah, the Clintons. The Clintons were the ones that really got into bed with China. I remember stories. Remember about them selling the Lincoln bedroom, renting it out. Yeah, Yeah. Chinese dignitaries. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to know the real story of why Obama picked Joe Biden? Because, like, at like the guy wasn't smart. He had failed a couple times. He had a ton of baggage. Like, what? Whatever the real story is, why they're like, let's put this crippled old white guy with you. I, and I know they're stupid, that. right? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Well, about- I mean, it all. I, I said before, and I say it again. Every president, other than well, I don't know about Ronald Reagan, but every president over the past few decades has been controllable, right? Period. Especially Bill Reagan, especially Reagan, George okay. H. W. Bush, CIA director. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Reagan. So yeah, you got Reagan, and then you had his his puppeteer um, Herbert Walker as a vice president. So Herbert Walker was 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 over top of him, and then they put Herbert Walker in charge and got uh, rid of all the Reagan people. Right. They hated the Reagan people, and you rarely ever you rarely ever see that. I mean, uh, that was a uniparty move. I mean, Trump, you know, what's crazy is that Herbert Walker got rid of all of Reagan's people, but Trump couldn't get rid of all of Obama's people. Because Herbert Walker knew the deal and Trump didn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're so afraid of him now, because now he does know the deal. Yeah. Oh, imagine how many people he needs to fire. I mean, you look yeah. back at you look back at, at Reagan. And Reagan was really the first Tea Party. Yeah. Reagan Reagan got electorate that the, the Republicans never got. He got yeah. the Teamsters Union. I mean, that, that was a one. Yeah, thing. he I, did. Didn't he? That election scared them people. Scared the Union Party. Right. Well, and imagine, I mean, like, let's go Dallas Cowboys. That's right. Try to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I still remember that Sam Donaldson. He looked like Mr. Spock on Star Trek. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Disrespected him every time he talked to him. Yep. Sure did. But I mean, let's think about the level of turnover. Like when Jimmy Johnson became coach of the Cowboys back in the day and he yeah, turned man. over everything down to the towel boy. I mean, yep. you would look at their roster and like week to week, it was like a third new players. He was getting rid of like anybody affiliated with the team because it was like we just need a. He computer. sure did. He sure did. And, and I mean, I remember reading. Gil Brandt. And, what's that? Gil, he got rid of Gil Brandt. He got rid of um, all those uh, old time uh, front office cowboy. Uh, well, yeah, he sure did. Like normal people that worked for him. He's like, yep. no, 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 we need a new weight trainer. We need a new janitorial staff. And he's like, we got to gut them all because I don't know where the rod is. Sure and is. I mean, that's what Trump's got to do in these federal agencies. And he might find that once he guts them, he might, I mean, you might see agencies having to be combined, which they need to be anyways, because he just might not have enough staff once you get rid of all the bad ones. Well, the other thing too, is this is where a good speaker of the house comes in. Right. You got to have somebody to support you doing that because every agency in the federal government is unionized yep. and they're big unions and they will fight back. Well, and actually the easiest way to do it is through like department shutdown as much attrition, as do attrition too. All you have to right. do is don't hire anybody else. 
three quarters of them are ready to retire right now. Right. You know, that's how you do it. You, you just don't hire anybody else. Hiring freeze. I put, um, I'm, uh, I put a little help thing on my Facebook page to help out wing And, um, <laughs> somebody was like, the problem with you, Wayne, is that you are not fact based and you are biased to Trump. And at all times, complicit with Trump lies. All right. How'd you like to wake up in the morning and feel that way? People live a miserable life. Yeah. Well, and even if he feels that way, whoever that person is, you could show them something like Ronald Joe got Biden it. tweeted yesterday about about how President Trump told you to inject bleach. He And the phrase he used was, he literally told you to inject bleach. Yeah. And I just replied to it and said, he never said that. He never said that. And, right. and it was a m- remarkable, the number of replies, yes, he did, here's this, here's that. A- a- and it's like, have you guys not watched the, like, the video? And what's scary is you could show them the video where he's talking about UV light in the body and maybe there's some way we could use disinfectants and saying like, maybe there's a way you could use disinfectant is a million miles away from go inject bleach. Like yeah. they aren't even the same thing. And and the, the CIA has done such a good job. I remember, and this is, this is while I think Obama was still president. I remember talking to a lady and bringing up some point about something that was going on. And she looked at me and said, that's just Alex Jones. You heard that on Alex Jones. That, that was <laughs> That was like an answer. Right. That was a serious answer. She was smart otherwise. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. They they demonized him so much. I mean. But, but then you go back to uh, the, the Entertainment Tonight uh, audio, too. The one that, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, In even when we interviewed Donald Trump, uh, 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 this was before, yeah, this was before he got in. And and I asked him, I was like, don't do you realize that the media takes your answer and it, it turns into a headline as if you came up with whatever it was when you were asked about it? They don't put, well, the question was this, and this was your answer. They turn everything around to make it sound like Donald Trump said such and such and such. And you remember what he said? He was like, Wayne, you're the only, you're the only one that ever said it. Yeah. You're the only one that um, has come up with that conclusion. And you are so right. That's that's what they do to me. They, made, they make it sound like it's just a statement that he came up with out of the blue. Exactly. Right? Instead of yeah. a reaction to a specific question that was right. planted there on purpose to get the statement. Like like um, like uh, when Frank. Lunt. When Frank Lunt. Uh, uh, called uh, what's called a hero, and he's like, I don't know, I don't know about that. I don't think he's a hero. you don't think John McCain's a hero. Well, you know, such and such and such. Not, not even half an hour later, uh, Donald Trump said John McCain's not a hero. And you and, and then you got Democrats. Oh, 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 I can't believe he said John McCain. Wait a minute. Democrats. That that should have been a, a, a uniparty thing right there. Uh, I can't believe he talking about John McCain like that. Yeah. Democrats coming out for John, John, John McCain. John McCain. Hey. Remember his uh, funeral. His funeral was like a state funeral. Right. Man, he. And he went through Washington, D.C. like he was Eisenhower, man. He was you know, a failed of, president. He Canada. made everybody so <laughs> many millions of dollars. One of the funniest things I ever saw. I think it was at the Gaylord. I'm not positive, but Uh-oh. is that where we oh. saw is that where we saw those Chinese protesters? Yeah. I remember yeah. like so one year I'm there and McCain's running for president. And mm-hmm. he comes in with an entourage and all mm-hmm. these people, right? And then we're in the next cycle. This is during the Romney. It's like, right? He pulls up in a Yugo or something. He's got this little car. This lady's driving it. He comes out of the passenger side. His speech is at like 8 in the morning, which if you know anything about CPAC, nobody's going right there. <laughs> like, man, a couple of years, this really changed in a couple of years. 
yeah. his status went boom down. Yep. yep. Sure All did. right. Now, before we go off this, guys, I got to talk about conspiracies and Alex Jones so that people can understand how how this all works. So all you need to do, Google Qatar, Dubai airport flooding. Because, seating. well, so for us in the conspiracy theory world, right, there has been, they've been scientifically shown that they've been trying to manipulate the weather through different things, through chemtrails or cloud seeding or different different things. And everybody called you crazy and said, if you think they're trying to manipulate the weather, and you could even cite si real scientific journals that would show, like, hey, no, they're, they're playing around with this. We probably shouldn't. So in Qatar, the last 48 hours, it has dropped a year and a half's worth of rain flooding in the streets. And mainstream news sources are saying that it's it's a cloud seeding program run amok. And, and like the weather manipulation that is legitimate science that has been talked about, you like if you even believed in this, you were a conspiracy theory, get your tinfoil hat. And now there's like video evidence of it. And they're coming out saying, yeah, well, this experiment didn't work out real well and rah, rah, rah. And nobody's going to go back and say, hey, what about all those people for the years when you were talking about this that you call crazy? Turns out like another conspiracy theory is right. But they label things. And frankly, I don't think the government or any scientist should be trying to do this weather manipulation. I think this is really bad. But if you talked about it two weeks ago, like you were crazy, that isn't happening. And now you got freaking Dubai flooded. And yeah, I saw that's, it. How, that's how they run it. But you know, but you know, Dubai was uh, built on water anyway. Um, the the um, solar eclipse or the, whatever it was, lunar solar. I don't know. They were doing chem. Um, they did the chemtrail thing. Yeah. While while the eclipse was going, because you saw them flying with the stuff right. It's like, what are they doing that now for? You know, while I mean, I'm like, wow, this that's that's just nuts. You see the whole trail going right in front of while the eclipse thing was going on. You were like, my son was like, they're doing that right, right as the right as the moon is going. Yeah, yeah, they sure are. You know, um, like every time there's trails in the sky doesn't mean it's chemtrails. But sometimes it is, and this should be a conversation. Ninety-nine point, yeah, ninety-nine point time it is, because if that many planes was smoking on the way down, you would think something was wrong, right? Um, something came out. I was listening on the radio uh, uh, the other morning, and um, had to had to check a look at it. There's a class action lawsuit. I don't know how long this has been going on. You know the the uh, school lunches. They have stuff like uh, it's like Lunchables, but they aren't Lunchables, but yeah. they are like Lunchables. Sodium and, bombs. Um, sodium bomb, and 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 now they found out that lead lead was was in the food. Uh, we gotta get a handle like, on our food supply, man. We have to. Dude, how long has this been happening? Did again. you watch the show yesterday? Did you watch that clip of that nutty buddy? No, no, I no, I didn't. 22 hours and it didn't melt yet. The ice cream thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I saw a clip throw up. somewhere I, up. Yeah, about that. I love that stuff. I used to eat. I do one. too. I I'm do not, too. I'm never eating another one. I mean, either. I won't either. Yeah. I, I, yeah, no, I don't know what we got to get a handle on this big food industry. Yeah. You know, you got it right now. We talked about it before. Big Pharma is running it. Yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we talked about we we talked about many of these. Um, uh, you remember when Popeyes that chicken sandwich was out and people were losing their damn minds over the chicken sandwich. Uh, 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 people were uh, in in the in the late in the late seventies before Ronald Reagan got uh, elected there was a gas crisis and there was a whole lot of cars lined up at the gas stations All to get gas. Okay. 
That's the same thing with, that, that was happening with the chicken sandwich. There was a lot of people lined up in the Popeye's drive through to get the chicken sandwich. And some people, especially in the black community, but many people start questioning, like, what in the hell is in that chicken sandwich that would make people line up like this? I mean, it, they even had a, um, a, a crazy name, crack chicken. Uh, but they were like, what type of ingredients is going into that to make people? Because at the time, like I said, you had the line. The next thing that comes from the line is violence. People were beating people up in the restaurant or they were beating the workers up because they ran out of the chicken. You know, it's like, what makes people do that? Now, talking to this guy and this guy was, this guy was talking about uh, Chick-fil-A. And uh, when, when you see Chick-fil-A uses like 50, 50, 50 ingredients for the whole chicken sandwich. 40 of those ingredients are man-made. And I know that we support Chick-fil-A. I, I know our side supports. As a matter of fact, when I posted that, somebody was like, yeah, that's a bad God darn chicken. Okay, all right. I mean, if that's if that's what you want to do. I, I've i never really got into Chick-fil-A, the, the chicken, because I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just something about it. I like the waffle fries. I like the, I like the peach shake. I like the little macaroni and cheese up. was good. Mm. Macaroni and cheese is great. I gotta say that chicken sandwich. I'm a fan. Yeah, and and so are my kids. I just right. can't eat it. I I, I was like, Ugh. you know, I mean, I, I've had better chicken before at a. For me, I've had better chicken before in the hood at the Five and Dime. <laughs> the, the 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 seasoning was great, but that's me. But when you look and say, man, you fifty. Phosphorus, what? Or acid, what? You know, when you start looking at those ingredients that's that's in there, and Chick Fil A was killing it, killing it there for a second. Uh, Chipotle is probably the same the same way. People were talking about Chipotle. <laughs> this guy was like, for like for five 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 years, six years in a row, Chipotle was head above heels above everybody. With their fresh and, and their portion and stuff. And now look at the stuff. It, it don't even taste fresh no more. You know? It, we got to, but what, but reading about that Lunchable stuff for our kids, how long have they, how long has that lead stuff been going on? We grew up with pizza slices and um, cinnamon, cinnamon toast in the morning, you know? And, like real turkey and gravy around Thanksgiving time, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, I was looking at some of the uh old TV dinners. <laughs> oh, I love them. That was real food. That I mean <laughs> that was real food in those aluminum like type trays, but I mean you put those in the oven and when it come out, the chicken was crispy. They they had this they had this Apple or peach or cherry <laughs> cobbler or, and stuff. Or that, or that brown cake, that brown yeah, brownie. That brown cake. Oh man, that brown you chocolate had, cake. You, you had to cook it and you had to leave the info the aluminum foil over the dessert. Yeah, right. right? You had to cut around it. <laughs> that was a that was a job in itself. Dude, but but that was real food. And, and then they upgraded to the hungry man. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Hungry man. Well, actually, if you go back and look at how TV dinners started, it was because they had like too much. They bought too much turkey. Too much turkey, and they're like, "Oh, what are we going to do with all this?" They had a train. They had a train filled with frozen turkeys, just driving around until they could figure out how to make these TV dinners. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. you should go on YouTube and find uh, the 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 origin story of the TV dinner. Okay, it's bet. it's like but a great rabbit hole. I saw one. I saw one that was a comp competition. Between TV dinners and Stouffer's. Right. It was great. Oh, man. yeah. Stouffer's. Yeah. Yeah. But I, lo but I love those kind of shows. But Hutch Baylor Jr. tells you about his Sundays where the family comes together and they eat. 
together. Mm. I was thinking about those TV dinners. TV dinners, I think, started to break the family up. No, oh, because man, remember the yeah. remember a TV dinner table. Exactly, they sit exactly. in front of the TV and you went away. There you go. There you go. Yep. 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 Yeah, I I thought about that the other day, Jason, because I know you kind of young. You don't remember um, those um, ten table, those ten, um, those ten dinner trays. That um, you know, Spider Man trays and stuff like that. You you had different uh, TV show trays, right. you know. Yeah, well, my generation know. was really the one where it went off went off the rails, where it, it just became food kids could make themselves because you were a latchkey kid. Your parents weren't home from work. You wanted to make something, you know. You had to have something fast and easy to make, and that's why even the whole concept of Lunchables is so bizarre. Like. We, it's it's some cheese, some crackers, some whatever, and we need this ultra processed manufacturer thing. Like we're too darn lazy to to get a chub of meat and some cheese, and and nobody stuff. has any honor, so they're just going to poison us so right. we can have extended shelf life. Right. You know, I still <laughs> have that that cooking your own food. My pantry's still stocked with uh, Campbell soup and spaghettios. Right. Yeah. Um, speaking about stocking as we're getting ready to roll out of here. Um, again, I was listening to the radio part with this, uh, with what is happening overseas and whatnot. I, I, you would have to be, uh, please, and please don't take this wrong. You would really have to be naive and idiotic to think that what is going on over there won't hurt our food supply over here. And years ago, we probably ne ne never really thought about uh, 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 the supply chain as we have over the last few years. But you're talking about people that have wheat and grain and seeds and all that stuff and everything. Ukraine, Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe. Exactly. Exactly. So even. Yeah, big, I mean, big, it, food, big food couldn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> Some of the best oh. meat in the world. Yes, yes. You know, maybe maybe we'll pick that up um, uh, later on in the week. Uh, well, tomorrow tomorrow's our last day, so maybe we might talk about that a little bit later. But I did want to say this: I did put a meme out, and I was serious as a heart attack and two strokes following. We talk about how the food is this and food is that and how the corporations are raising all the prices and stuff like that. Uh, and I think Jay even talked about, well, actually, I think both of y'all go to butchers. But um, what you need to start doing, and you're hearing this from the Wayne Dupree um, podcast, start going to uh, what's it called? farmer's markets. Uh, find, farmers a local, market. find a local farm. Right. Either either find a local farm or start going to farmers markets. Okay, you get better food, better better quality, um, and you know what you're getting rather than what you're seeing overpriced in the stores. And don't um, look don't look forward to modern solutions. Look to your past. Right. Get some jar mason jars out and can it after you go to the right. farmers market, like your yeah. grandmother did and your mom. Right. And if you don't know how to can it, there are videos on YouTube and showing so you how to can the old way. I never even thought that when you put the stuff in there, then you got to heat it up or something like that, and then it seals it or whatnot. Or what? I I rather I mean I was going to ask Hutch about it because I know he cans a whole lot of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean it, it's like wow, yeah, it's amazing yeah. when you open one of them that you you canned a year or two years ago. And you open a jar of tomatoes that smells like your garden, man. It's great. Still fresh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, farmer's market, y'all. Make a day of it. Get out of the house, by the way. Make a day of it. Get fresh stuff, fresh food, fresh fish, uh, um, fresh, fresh everything. And then you don't even have to go into a supermarket. You ain't got to do none of that stuff. And 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 then you're coming home with four hundred dollars worth of groceries, and in one bag, you know you got four hundred dollars in one brown bag. 
So, because they really don't have the plastic bags anymore. All right. We got to get ready to get out of here. My name is Wayne Dupree. Uh, we're going to hear from J-Rod. And then we're going to hear from Hutch. And then we're going to roll out. We're going to see you out tomorrow at 12. Okay. All right. Hey, Wayne Hutch. Great show as always, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, two thoughts. One on the food thing. Start simple. Just get your meat from the butcher. Just make that one change. Get your bacon, get your burger, get your chicken breast. Get it from the butcher instead of getting it from the grocery store. Thank us later. Second thought is I went back. I didn't have time yesterday morning, but I watched that January 6th Supreme Court hearing or listened to it because it's audio. I'll tell you what, folks, it's going to be 5364, and they're going to overturn that 1512. And then you are going to see the left's head explode. It's going to take three, four weeks for the ruling to come out. But Gorsuch, there was a few things. And at minimum, they established that they're improperly or unequally applying the law because they've mm-hmm. never gone after anybody for this sort of thing before. But I, I, I they, even some of the justices are like, you want to give the government power to do this? It's pretty scary. So be on the lookout for that. It'll be middle of May, end of May. And then the Supreme Court, they'll want to they'll want to expand. Over to you, Hutch. You'll see a lot more Palestinian flags in the crowds this time too. This oh, summer, yeah. um, people know basically uh, that military people have been exposed in the past and been compensated as such for exposure to burn pits, toxins, IEDs, chlorine bombs in Iraq and Afghanistan, burning oil wells, Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. Well, there's a good uh, movement that's happening right now. Uh, with the PACT Act. The PACT Act is uh, the promise to address comprehensive facts about these toxins. And there's people right now that are trying to classify the people who were forced to get COVID-19 vaccines that they have been exposed to toxins. And I hope that goes through and I hope they bankrupt somebody. Unfortunately, it'll probably be the government, the, the taxpayers, but somebody should pay for that. I think that's a good, that's a good development. There we go. All right. For Hutch, Jay, and Wayne, y'all have a great evening. God bless.